All right, this last part of our uh, digital painting demo, this is after almost all of our direct painting has been done and we have a, a finish that we like. All the elements and textures are where we want them. Certain focal points like the eyes and his pipe and his mustache, they don't, um, they don't stand out as, as overly finished compared to other aspects that aren't so important like his, his ear or his hair or his collar. There are maybe some areas like his shoulder here that I want to work on a little bit. And this is just how we've been finishing. I'm using a fairly simple direct brush. I'm painting from a distance away and I'm stealing colors just from myself. As you're finishing it off, it's actually kind of helpful not to look at reference because you're trying to resolve the problems just as its own artwork. You're not trying to match anything else, you're just trying to make it satisfying for what it is. And there's no uh, easy way to decide when you're finished or done with a digital painting. I don't think any professional that does this uh, ever feels like they can or are allowed to put enough time in to do a great job. But this idea of kind of a uniform finish where everything feels as considered as everything else, that's pretty important. So the technique is pretty simple in finishing off. You steal colors from yourself, but you're at a low opacity. So I'm just under a 50% brush opacity. And then you steal those colors over and over again. And because they're, they're low opacity colors painting over other established colors, you keep making new intermediate colors that will help blend between different strokes. So the more you do it, I also have shape dynamics turned on the brush so it goes thick to thin, will feel more organic. The more every part of this project will feel considered and and equally kind of touched by the artist and, and carefully uh, finished off. And that's something we definitely want to have in our work. It makes us look professional instead of amateurish. Not just to have the really cool parts of our, of our artwork finished off nicely, but to have every aspect of it held to this high level. Okay. So, once you're happy with that, the process isn't quite over. I know now that I'm happy with this square composition. I don't need much more than that. Once I've saved all these process layers that have built this project up, and you can see all those layers here, in order to, to finish it off, I want to refine and merge some of those layers together so I can do some direct adjustments on top of them. A big advantage of digital art is we can kind of treat the artwork as a finished photo and we can process the photo. We can play with its color relationships, we can play with uh, texture overlays, we can composite elements into it that we think would be helpful. And of course the core of it is always our direct painting. So. I'm going to start by, by saving it because I want to keep all of these different layers together. This is my working file. If I ever want to go back and mess with my speed painting or, or mess with uh, all these different aspects, I'll use this file to do that. And then once I crop it and merge it, I'll save it as a new file. and I'm going to crop it into something fairly square-like. <laughs> Cropping is how you can control the composition of your piece. I gave myself that mask and that helps a lot to kind of know where I should expect the piece to work.
And then you just uh, hit return. This will also save a lot of memory because all of those pixels outside of the cropping area now, the computer doesn't have to remember on all of those different layers. Okay, and now I'm going to save it as something else. So I'm going to save as my final Mark Twain portrait. And now I'm going to delete these layers I don't have any need of anymore. They just take up space, making it print ready. Any of these layers I have turned off or locked. I can see if any of these layers have something to add, like this flat color layer. Maybe if I take it at a much lower opacity and I soften it out using the blur filter. Maybe that has something to add. If I scale it in on itself a little bit so its edges aren't so strong. So these are the kind of the tricks you can play once you're all finished. So let's build it up and see what I have. So I have my flat color layers softened and shrunk in there and also at a lower opacity. On top of that I have my speed painting. Still looks a little bit more like Albert Einstein than Mark Twain there. But I got a nice kind of middle tone texture that I did more refined painting on top. I did the first refined painting to kind of figure out my strokes and and my colors uh, around his eyes. And then I built, built the rest of it around there. But without that treatment of the eyes, it looks like just a bunch of painting strokes. It doesn't look like the portrait that it is. At this point, before I merge together, I could play with different levels of opacity. And it's one of my favorite tools in Photoshop to play with opacity to help soften certain things out. I think that actually works pretty well to have it at have the refined final painting of outside of the eyes at and only about three quarters or eighty percent of what it's meant to be. That helps blend it in with the, the textures underneath a little bit better. And I could go back and forth. The refined painting, I think I do want to keep at very close to 100%. That's the eyes. If you soften that too much, I think I'm going to lose a lot of my likeness. And I'm going to lose a lot of my sharp edges. So maybe keep that at about 95. My speed painting. If I take its levels down, it just looks too sketchy. It doesn't have that, that foundation it needs of lights and darks behind everything. So painting is, is everything. It's the underpainting, it's the midtones, and then it's the highlights and shadows on top. Now the one thing I need is, in my flat colors here, I need to extend the bottom of my flat colors. So I'm simply going to take my brush. Make it a lot bigger, maybe make it a more simple brush, very soft, at 100% opacity, and I'm just going to extend these colors down. So that make more sense. And now I don't have that harsh line. All right.
There also might be things you want to erase or soften. So the speed painting gives him this little soft halo around his hair, which mostly works well, but maybe in some areas I want to erase that back a little. You can use a variety of different brushes. I like to use slightly low opacity brushes, different shapes and sizes, because erasing away is just as helpful as painting in. And every, every time you get to a place where you think, okay, yeah, that makes sense, I like that, you're going to save it again. All right, now I think I'm ready to merge these layers together. And I'm gonna merge all my painting layers but I'm gonna keep them separate from the, the blank uh, white background and the blank gray background that I have behind. So my computer catch up with me. All of these strokes in Photoshop take a lot of processing. So when things start to run slowly, it's just because you've been doing so many direct commands, it's having to hold each command in its history. And it needs to catch up. But if it does that too much, you just want to restart Photoshop and try again. All right, so once it's saved, you can then take all your painting layers, select them all, all these that are showing, go to layer and merge those layers that you've selected. So now it's all in one layer, which is really helpful because now everything's in one place. It makes a lot of sense. For one thing, if you want to do any kind of carrying over of textures, clone stamping, dodging and burning. It's all together for you now. Just gonna do a little bit of that here because I lost a little bit of that texture in my opacity change. The other thing that makes it nice about moving everything together is that now you can do direct adjustments on the whole thing. So if I make a duplicate of this layer with Command J, I can then go to uh, image adjustments and I can play with its levels. And again, we're not basing this on reference, we're just looking at it as its own. And I can deepen its shadows or lighten its midtones, brighten its highlights, decide to darken its midtones. <laughs> And I only wish that you could do this with traditional painting to kind of fix your overall values after the fact. And the reason I do it on a duplicate layer is that I can compare it with what I had before. So that's what I had before. That's more optimized. And then you can always play with opacity and kind of merge the two together. And maybe you're very happy with your levels and you don't need them optimized anymore. That's all up to you. Okay, the next thing we can do is we can play with colors. So I'm gonna take those two, I'm gonna merge them together, I'm gonna make a duplicate of it, and I'm gonna play with the color balance adjustment and I can push all the colors maybe a little bit more towards the green side in the midtones, maybe a little bit more towards the blue. And this is like glazing with color in a painting. I could push it redder, I could push it more cyan.
And I always like at the end of a project to just look at these options and see if any of them are helpful.